<clears throat> Good morning. I hope that you guys are doing well. Today is um, March the 8th. Uh, <clears throat> I believe it's a Thursday. <laughs> uh, let's go and open up our Bibles to um, Matthew chapter number 5. Uh, last time we were together, we talked about how Jesus told the Jews, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. <clears throat> we explained that, interpreted it in its original context and meaning, and then made application to the primary application to the Jew, and then also made second application to uh, the church. <clears throat> and then in verse number 14 today, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, <clears throat> which is in heaven. So let's go ahead and pray real quick, and then we'll get into this text. Father, we love you and do ask that you go for us today. Bless our time as we gather around your word. Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to understand the things that you have for us. Lord, you know the needs that are represented on both sides of the screen. Father, I pray that you'd meet them according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, <clears throat> Interesting scripture. Jesus now tells the Jews that they are the light of the world. <clears throat> now, if you look back in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light. Uh, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, we're all very familiar with that scripture. Um, but from these verses, we see that right after God created the heavens and the earth, he created um, light. What I find interesting, and this is where you need to put your thinking caps on, is that this light is not the sun, the moon, or the stars because they were not created until the fourth day. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and the night, and let them be signs for seasons, for days, and for years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven and gave light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. The evening and the morning were the fourth day. So clearly there is a difference between the light created in verse 3 and the lights that were created in verses 14 through 19. The psalmist declares, the day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. That's in Psalm 74 and verse number 16. Now Isaiah speaks of this initial light. In Isaiah 45, 7, when he said, I form the light and I create the darkness. I make peace, I create evil, evil, I the Lord do all these things. Now this light that God created here in verse number three appears to be a form of energy that is visible, obviously, to the human eye. Um, now upon further study, we are told this is, that this light actually comes out of the darkness. Um, which would seem to indicate the darkness was there first, and then the light came. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined light into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the purpose of this light 
that was shining, that was created to shine out of the darkness, was to shine into our hearts and give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. With this first light, this is what I'm getting. Okay. With this first light, we would not be able to see the light that comes from the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, no, I, I can't explain that to you at all. All I know is that in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 3, God created light. And it wasn't until the fourth day, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, that God actually created the sun, the moon, and the stars. But the point being that you would not be able to see the sun, the moon, the light of the sun and the moon and the stars if it was not for this initial light that was created to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, now I can make some application. Um, I do know that just as there would be no life apart from the initial light, which is Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, Jesus compared himself to that same light when he said in John 8, I am the light of the world. Uh, he is, he claimed to be that light that brings life. In John chapter 3 verse 19, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, and neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are truly wrought in God. So, I mean, you can remember back to your heathen existence prior to coming to know God. Certainly deeds are done in the darkness. They're not done in the light. Um, I think back to my BC days, you know, before Christ. Um, it all happened at night. Uh, you don't want to do it in the daytime unless your deeds should be exposed. First John 5, 12, uh, John said, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So, in the end, we need light to live physically, and we need light to live spiritually. As a matter of fact, the existence of light is one of the greatest testimonies for the existence of God, because no one can explain to this day where the light came from. Uh, trust me, the evolutionists still don't have a clue. Um, as a matter of fact, part of God's punishment for those who reject him is to remove them from this light. Matthew eight twelve. but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Now again, we're in Matthew, Jewish Messiah, speaking to a Jewish people. He's saying, because the children of the kingdom, Jesus came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But the children of the kingdom, referring to the Jews, shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, just interesting, you know, I mean, um, this light, uh, Jesus is the light of the world, a city um, uh, set on a hill that cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle, but put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick. So, just just interesting about this light, you know, created in Genesis 1-3, prior to the sun, the moon, and the stars in Genesis 1-14. Obviously, this light was created so that we could actually see the light um, from the sun and the moon and the stars. So, just, you know, again, I can't explain that. I think Paul, you know, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, he commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. Why? Uh, to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God so that we can see all of God's creation. How? In the face of Jesus Christ. So just, you know, very interesting portion of scripture. You know, but Jesus did claim to be the light of the world that brings life. In him is life and light, and without him is darkness and death. Well, listen, guys, God bless you. I hope that you have a great day. 
Remember that God loves you, wants the best for you. He's working all things out for your good.